Hey kids, great to see you all back again. So we are continuing our series called Kids in the Bible. And today I'm going to share you an amazing story. And we're going to entitle the story, Joseph. And this story is about uh, how God chooses an ordinary young boy named Joseph for his extraordinary plan. And our story goes like this. Joseph was the son of Jacob, and Jacob had 12 sons. And this is a big family. You can have like your own football team or like a double basketball team. You see, it wasn't all that awesome for Joseph because you know why? His brothers didn't like him. In fact, they hated him. Ever wondered why they didn't like Joseph? Well, Joseph is Jacob's favorite son. So his dad loved him like crazy. His father thinks of his son Joseph as the coolest, the most amazing, the most awesome kid in the entire world. To show Joseph how much his dad loves him, his dad gave him a present. Do you want to guess what the present is? Is it a toy? Is it a new shoes or a PS4? None of those. His dad made him a beautiful, colorful coat. Now this isn't just a regular coat. In fact, this is a very special coat considered back then. The fabric feels super nice and the colors are so wonderful and vibrant. And these are hard to make back in those days. It was really incredible, but not everyone loved this coat. When the brothers saw this coat, they got extra jealous and they got extra mean towards Joseph. Then something very interesting began to happen. Joseph started having some interesting dreams. And with these dreams, this makes the brothers 11 brothers get really mad. So these are the dreams God gave Joseph, which means God is telling Joseph that God has a big plan for his life. And this is how the story goes. Joseph told the dreams he had. Last night, I dreamed that we were collecting wheat when suddenly my bundle of wheat stood up straight and yours all bowed down before it. What are you saying, growled the brothers, that you're going to rule over us someday? Be off with you. Joseph had another dream. This time, the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. He told his family. Even Jacob became quite upset when he heard about Joseph's latest dream. Do you really believe that your mother and I and all your brothers are going to bow down before you? Don't get ahead of yourself. But Jacob did wonder to himself about what the dream might mean. Joseph's brother had enough. They felt the time had come to get rid of their annoying brother. One day, when they were out in the field, they tore off his multicolored coat and threw him in the pit. Shortly, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelite traders passing by on their way to Egypt. Quick as a flash, they decided to sell their 17-year-old Joseph to the traders. Joseph was sold as a slave to one of Pharaoh's officials a man named Potiphar. But God was still with Joseph. His ability to tell what the dream meant was what got him out of the jail. And soon, he was telling Pharaoh what his dream meant. The Pharaoh had a warning dream, which Joseph interpreted and saved Egypt from going hungry due to famine. Hey guys, do you know what famine is? A famine is a shortage of food nationwide. 
but in Canaan, Joseph's hometown, the famine was very bad, and Jacob sent his sons to Egypt to buy food. When the brothers reached Egypt, the brothers bowed down before Joseph, but not knowing who he was. Joseph could see his dreams becoming into a reality as they bowed their heads low and begged for food. Now Joseph could have taken this chance to punish his brothers for selling him and being mean to him. But he chose to show his brothers love, kindness, and most of all, he has forgiven them. For everything has been part of God's plan. How would you react if someone treats you badly? Do you respond with revenge or do you forgive them? And look, let's look together of this great quality that even Jesus had and what Jesus want us to have. Number one, honesty. Joseph did not cheat or lie to himself or to his family. He was really honest in everything he does, even at the point of telling his dreams to others. He was just transparent and showing great honesty and telling the truth all the time. Joseph showed himself with a heart like Jesus. Number two, humble. Joseph never allowed his high position to look down on anyone. He never changed. He's still very humble, helping people, helping his family. He never um, is prideful and look highly of himself. And he carried this attitude throughout his entire life. Number three, be disciplined. You see, Joseph was put into a jail for a crime he did not commit. And although he could have rebelled and just fight with others about this injustice, he didn't do so. In fact, he showed self-control. Just like Jesus, he also obeyed his heavenly father, even on the death on the cross. Number four, faithfulness. You see, Joseph was going through a lot of painful uh, things in his life. It started off with his brother selling him off. They hated him. Um, also, he, he was put into a jail for a crime he did not commit. And at the same time, things were just bad as it seems. You see, he was still faithful to God. He prayed to Him. He believed in Him. He trusted God in all through the seasons. So God is asking us to do the same thing. We need to keep our eyes on God. We need to look ahead, keep our eyes on Jesus, and not on the bad things that are happening to us. We have to have a heart that's always loving God and trusting Him. Number five, love and forgiveness. Here's what's amazing. Joseph showed love and forgiveness to his brothers. And even if they didn't deserve it, he blessed them anyway. He loved them anyway. And this is exactly what Jesus wants us to have to learn from him as well. So Jesus was put on the cross by those people that hated him. And so Jesus offered forgiveness to us that hurted him. And these are wonderful qualities to have when we obey and continue to love God. And just like Jesus, He extends His compassion and love and forgiveness to us even if we do not deserve it. And Joseph is a reflection of Jesus' qualities that God wants to have for us. Number six, be skillful. Joseph wanted to do things excellently in everything he does whether it'll just be cleaning or looking after the jail, he did it excellently. And just like Jesus, he did everything excellently and gave his all for us. Number seven, being wise. 
because of Joseph's experiences, whether it's good or bad, this allows us to learn from the things uh, that helps us decide on what God wants us to do. So even at your young age, you can learn to decide and pick the right way through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Number eight, be organized. Joseph was able to organize during the seven years of plentiful. Seven years that there's a lot of food, Joseph was able to organize them so that could be stored properly. So when the years of hardship or famine comes, Joseph is able to extend his help to the surrounding nations and also at the same time providing food resources on the country of Egypt. God wants us to be good steward of what He blesses us with. And so that way, with what we have, we can multiply what we have and extend it to others who are in need. So these are the qualities we've learned for today's lesson. And now we have looked at the qualities of Joseph and you could clearly see how God has molded Joseph to have this Christ-like qualities. And it's not just going to be in Joseph. God has plans for our life. And if we allow God to work through our difficulties, to our happy moments, to our every situation, God is able to bring us our best quality that reflects Jesus in us and through us. Joseph has used his God's given gift and abilities so that he could help the people around him. Let me ask you this. Who do you want to be? Are we followers or are we leaders? In my encouragement, let's be leaders for Jesus. Let's be like Joseph. And let's ask God that as he work in our lives, that we are able to shine Jesus more to others and to become an excellent leaders leading others to know Christ. Thank you for joining me today and remember you are special and God loves you very much. Have a blessed day.